Welcome back guys. Welcome to today's video where we're going to talk about competition and what to expect the first time you compete. I feel like there's a lot of little details that go into competing and what happens on the day of and if you've never competed before, I feel like a lot of it is this big mystery and can seem a little bit overwhelming, right? So I think talking about it and just kind of letting you know what to expect the day that you compete is super helpful. So first things first if you've signed up for your first competitions first of all that's freaking awesome competing is the most exciting difficult but rewarding thing I think that you could ever do maybe not the most but it's definitely up there so the fact that you've already made that decision to either sign up or you already have signed up is so awesome you're gonna learn so much so after you've signed up or if you're very much close to signing up the first thing that I would do is to tell your coach. It is likely that he or she has competed tons and tons and tons of times before or has just attended tons and tons and tons of competitions before. So they've been there, they've done that, they know to expect and they're just there to help you. Whether that be in the gym with your training, helping you with specific techniques that you can kind of take into your game and work on the day of the competition or how to mentally prepare because that's a huge thing as well. It's not just physical, it is definitely mental too. So 100% absolutely tell your coach ahead of time so that he or she can help you along the way and prepare as best as they can. They are one of your biggest support systems. So in my opinion, it is crucial that they know that you're going to go out there and compete. I would also tell your teammates, people that you train with on the regular, this way they can push even harder in training to get you ready. They can hype you up, they can build up your confidence, and they can push you even harder than usual to get you really prepared. So you've told your coaches, you've told your teammates, now what? Well, there's a ton of different organizations that run tournaments and super fights, and a lot of them have all these different rules. So I would say the next thing to do is to look at the organization, go on their website, and read their rules. Some things that can vary from organization to organization is weigh-ins the day of, or sometimes weigh-ins can be the night before. Some have you weigh in with your gi on, some don't. Some give you a pound allowance for your weight class. So for example, grappling industries, my weight class is lightweight. So that's 135, but they give you a pound allowance. So if I weigh in at 136, I can still fight. It's all good. And they tell you that in the rule book. So that's just something that's good to know ahead of time. Some tournaments are different with the techniques that they allow in competition. In IBJJF, you cannot do heel hooks as a purple belt. In grappling industries you can so it's just really good to read their rules to read their handbook just to be aware ahead of time of what you can and can't do also figure out if you're gonna compete in gi if you're going to compete in no gi if there's an absolute division obviously you want to figure that out ahead of time so that you can bring the right clothing with you when you're packing your bag and you're getting your clothes together for the competition I personally always bring plenty of clothes like I feel like I'm going on vacation one obviously you got to make sure that you're bringing the right fight gear if you're doing gi, no gi, or both. And again, this goes back to the tournament rules. You want to make sure that whatever you're wearing is compliant with what the tournament allows. Again, IBJJF is very strict. You can only wear royal blue, black, or white gis. So any of those super fun, colorful gis, you cannot wear in IBJJF. But in something like Naga or Grappling Industries, you can pretty much wear whatever you want. If you're doing no gi, find out if you can wear whatever rash guard you want or if it has to be specific to the rank that you are. Again, IBJJF being pretty strict, you have to wear a ranked rash guard. If you're looking for a ranked rash guard for competition, I got you covered. That's all I'm saying. I want to thank Alchemize Fightwear for sponsoring today's video. If you are a woman looking for a ranked rash guard or a super cute t-shirt, head on over to alchemizefightwear.com and they have got you covered. I have known about Alchemize Fightwear for a while now, for a couple of years. I work with Maya, who's the founder, when I had a jujitsu podcast. So I have a couple of their rash guards. I've worn them in training, and they are so 
comfortable. And now they have recently come out with ranked rash guards, which is so awesome. Some tournaments are pretty strict when it comes to their rash guards. What I love about Alchemized Fightwear is that it's a brand created by a woman for women, because we all know that finding jujitsu gear can be kind of hard. Companies still cater towards men. And look, this isn't me being all anti-man in jiu-jitsu. It's just kind of a fact that jiu-jitsu is a male-dominated sport and women are still kind of making their way into it and making their presence known. But a lot of companies still have more fight wear and gear for men. Whether it's just more options available, whether it's cooler, more creative designs. In terms of rash guards, from what I've seen, a lot of times companies just have like these plain, boring rash guards for women and then they have all these really cool designs for men. Or some companies don't even carry women's sizes at all. And the way that our bodies are, they are very different than a man's body. So buying a man's rash guard in extra small doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna fit me. The Alchemized gear is designed to not only fit a woman's body really well, but it's also designed to make you look and feel good when you're training because that's really important too. If you're comfortable with what you're wearing and you feel good in it, I think, and I've said this before, I think you're going to perform better. And that's really like in anything. If you're wearing clothing that you don't feel good in, you don't feel cute in, your confidence is not gonna be as high. But if you're wearing clothing that you feel really good in, that fits well, that's that's gonna boost your confidence. And I think in jujitsu, that's gonna make you train better. It's gonna make you roll better. And I think it's going to make you compete better. I am so excited to be working with Alchemized Fightwear for this video, not only because they are such an awesome brand geared towards women fightwear, but also because something super exciting happened recently. I have hit my 1000 subscriber mark on YouTube. And let me tell you, even though in the big world of YouTube, that is not a lot, but for a small YouTuber, that's kind of like that first big milestone. So I am very excited about it. And that's all thanks to you guys, everyone who has subscribed and engaged with my channel so far. So I wanna do something for you guys to show you just how grateful I am and just how appreciative I am of everyone who has subscribed to my channel so far. To celebrate, my 1,000 subscriber mark, I am teaming up with Alchemized Fightwear to do a giveaway for you guys. Here's a scoop. After you watch this video, leave a comment and tell me one way that jujitsu has positively impacted you so far. I will give one week for submissions and then I will randomly choose a winner and the winner will get a free rash guard from Alchemized Fightwear. We are shipping both in the US and internationally so anyone watching from anywhere in the world can enter this giveaway. So again, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video and let me know one way that jujitsu has positively impacted your life. And that's it. Obviously, I would appreciate it if you are subscribed. So I'm going to just have the faith that if you are entering this giveaway that you are subscribed to my channel. And that's it, that's all you gotta do. So a week from when I upload this video, I will randomly choose the winner and I will let you guys know. So the day has come and you are ready to compete. I would highly suggest bringing plenty of snacks. Before I compete, the day before, I always do a little grocery shopping and I have my cool with me, I have my big jujitsu bag with me, and I am just ready and prepared for the long day ahead. Be prepared for a really long day. And if anyone out there watching is like me, I cannot go hours and hours without food or I get very hangry. To me, the worst thing ever is to be really hungry and not have any food available. Like that's just the worst idea ever. So I am always really prepared when I go to tournaments with plenty of snacks. If you are right on weight, I would suggest not eating anything until you weigh in. If you're a few pounds under and you want to have a snack, then you don't really have anything to worry about. But also know ahead of time if you weigh in right before you go on the mat, like IBJJF, or if you weigh in 
in and then you'll have a little bit of time to eat something if you want. In IBJJF, you officially weigh in and then go usually right to the mat that you're gonna compete on. In other smaller tournaments, you usually have a little bit of time to have a snack after you weigh in. So obviously this varies from person to person, but I cannot go out there and compete if I'm super hungry. I like to feel kind of full and satisfied. So if I have time after I weigh in to have a snack, Honestly, I eat a turkey sandwich. And since tournament days are usually very long days, I usually pack a couple for me and my fiance so that I can eat them throughout the day. But yeah, literally, as soon as I step off the scale, I'm eating a turkey sandwich. If you're not like me and you can't stomach to have a full sandwich <laughs> before you go out onto the mat, some fruit would be just fine if you have a couple of hours until you fight. Maybe some slow releasing carbohydrates like oatmeal, maybe some oatmeal with fruit. That's also another good option. The only thing that I wouldn't really suggest is any kind of meal or snack that's really high in fats. Fats take the longest to digest, so you don't want all of your body's energy going into digesting that food and things kind of getting a little funky in your gut while you are on the mat. So I wouldn't suggest having anything that's too high in fat. So don't go eating like a whole bowl of guacamole. Some other things that I usually like to pack when I go to tournaments is obviously one, my turkey sandwich. Two, I usually like to have some fruit as well. Sometimes I'll bring some hard boiled eggs, maybe a protein bar. And then I always pack my favorite chips for after I compete. My favorite chips are the white cheddar pop chips. So I always have those with me. I always bring plenty of water and I don't care. Listen, I know that Gatorade is not the healthiest thing in the world for you, but Gatorade, blue Gatorade, is the only thing that I like to drink after I step off the mats after I just fought. I have tried Pedialyte, so don't come at me and tell me that I should try Pedialyte. I think it's so freaking disgusting. I have tried my best to enjoy Pedialyte more than Gatorade, but I just never will. There's just something about the texture. It's like thick. I think it's so gross. So the only thing that I really like to have after I just fought is a nice cold blue Gatorade. I have it with me for every single tournament and it's just so refreshing. So be prepared with plenty of drinks so that you can hydrate either after you weigh in or after you fought. Something that's really important for competition days, I would say is to be prepared to wait around. Like I said, they can be very long days and sometimes you have a couple of hours in between divisions or a couple of hours from when you weigh in until you compete in your first division. So be prepared. When I compete and I have a while until I step on the mats, I like to kind of calm my nerves by talking to people, talking to my teammates and watching other matches. That's just something that I like to do. I don't want to get too much in my head yet, too far out from when I actually step on the mat. So for me, being social and watching other people's matches, cheering other people on kind of gets me out of my own head until I have to kind of enter my internal headspace. <laughs> About an hour before my first match, that's when I start to kind of stop talking to people <laughs> and start getting into my own head. I'll put my rash guard on, I'll put my leggings or shorts on, I'll put my gi on, whatever I'm doing. I will get my hair ready, I'll put my headphones in, and then I pretty much will not talk to anyone for the remaining time. I'll start to move around a little bit. Some tournaments give you a designated area to warm up, some don't. So you have to find your own little space. But for about 45 minutes to an hour, I will just have my headphones in. I'll kind of be unattached from the outside world and just kind of hyping myself up, getting myself mentally prepared to go out on the mat and compete and to get my body moving, maybe to break a little sweat and just get nice and loose before I go out there. Being really nervous is okay. Being really nervous is completely normal. Even the highest level black belts competing on the biggest stages, they still get nervous. I will say, going out there and competing is probably not like anything you're going to ever experience. It is 100% different than rolling in the gym. And I know people like to say, it's just another roll. Think of it as training. It's not like that. It is so different. When I'm training in the room and if I mess up, I know that everything's gonna be okay and I can recover. If I tap out, 
now, we start over again. In competition, there is so much more pressure because you don't wanna get behind on points. And obviously you don't wanna get tapped out because you don't wanna lose. So it's just very different. You're kind of out there in the space and the lights are shining on you. All of these people are watching and it's just a very different feeling than being in the training room. I think the biggest thing in competition, win or lose, you are going to walk out of there with just a different level of experience. You're going to feel different. You're gonna go back in the training room and you're going to feel different and you're going to train different because competition is always gonna be on your mind. Unless you absolutely hated it and you never wanna do it again, that's something different and that's okay too. But if you think that you wanna get back out there and try it again, I think that you are just gonna feel different about your jujitsu and you're going to train differently because competition will always be in the back of your mind. After you're done competing and the day is over, win or lose, go and eat your favorite meal and eat a lot of it because you freaking deserve it. Another thing that I definitely do also recommend is have your matches filmed and go over your matches with your coach. Again, win or lose, it might be hard to look back at the matches if you lost really bad, but it's so important to see where you made mistakes, where you messed up. So now you know when you go back to training, now you know what to fix and how to fix them. Even if you win, you probably still made mistakes in the match. So it's so important to look back on those videos and see where you can be better for next time. Overall, competing is probably the scariest thing ever, but it is the most awesome thing ever. I've personally gone through periods where I won a lot and I did really well competition after competition. And I've gone through periods where I'm kind of at right now where purple belt, I haven't done that well in competition. I've won some, but I've lost a lot. So I'm kind of struggling mentally with competing. And if you're there with me, I know it's normal and it's a struggle, but it's got to work through it. And if competing is something you love, really the only way to, I think, beat that mental struggle with competing is to keep competing. So I've got to tell myself that a lot. <laughs> I hope this video was helpful and I hope that it kind of opened your eyes up to what a day in competition is like and what to expect before and during competition. Remember to post in the comment section one way that jujitsu has positively impacted your life so that you can enter my giveaway for a free rash guard. Who doesn't want a free rash guard? Except, uh, guys, I'm sorry, this this isn't for you. <laughs> so until the next video, I will see you guys next time.